By this point, we probably all already know that the integral, by definition, is the area underneath the curve. So regardless of concavity or slope, it'll always measure the area bounded. There are multiple ways to solve integrals. Um, you can solve it using the integral function, but the way you estimate it is through Riemann sums, which is basically just rectangles that go along the curve, or like the function. So not all Riemann sums are the same. For example, if you take this thick piece of paper, you can see that the thick paper has a wider base than the thin piece of paper, which only has a small base. This means that the thin base is more accurate when you put it in terms of an integral. So let's put this in terms of an actual function. This one is increasing in concave down, and when you put down the LRAM with a thick base, you can actually see how much area is left of the function. That's all area that's unaccounted for. Okay, so here's an opposite example. Same graph, same function, but with different bases. With a smaller base, you can see how much area is left to be unaccounted for, and it's way less than the one before. They give a more accurate estimate because they're closer to the value of the actual integral. Okay, let's talk about estimation. LRAM is always going to be an underestimation if the function is increasing. Doesn't matter if it's concave up or concave down, but it will be an overestimation if the function is decreasing. It's vice versa for RAM. TRAM has to do more with concavity. If the function is concave up, TRAM is an overestimate. And if the function is concave down, you can see that TRAM is an underestimate. To actually approximate this, usually we'll have a table, but sometimes you just have to make your own. The first thing you should notice is that the bases are equal, though. So for RM, you multiply the interval, in this case 10, with all the numbers except the first one. Same thing with LRAM, but with the last number. For TRAM, you've got to use a different formula. So here's the formula for TRAM, but remember that you can only use this if your bases are the same. MRAM also is a bit different. You have to find the midpoint, 20, 40, 60, between the two bases, and find the value for that. So these are in the interval 10, 30, 50, 70, so you just find the midpoints of that. The second table is a bit different. The bases are not the same. So in this case, for LRAM, TRAM, and MRAM, you've got to use individual bases and calculate that by itself. Approximate the area between the x-axis and g-x from x equals 10 to x equals 16 using an LRAM with three unequal subdivisions. So basically what they're asking is just an LRAM with different bases. So first we're going to calculate the difference in bases, which is 2, 3, and 1. And since we're doing LRAM, we've got to look at the value to the left. So for 2, we're doing 5. For 3, we're doing 1. And for 1, we're doing 7. So basically, you can just leave it like this. You don't have to simplify on the AP test. But if you want to simplify, it's just you're just going to have to add it up, and it ends up turning out to be 20. A rectangular canal 5 meters wide and 100 meter long has an uneven bottom. Depth measurements are taken at every 20 meters along the length of the canal. Use these measurements to construct an RM to estimate the volume of water in the canal. So basically what they're asking you is just a standard RM with an interval of 20. So when you calculate the base, it's actually just 20 the entire time through, which makes it easy for us. So we're going to be using the rightmost numbers. So basically this means we're using 1.6 all the way to 1.9. We're not using 2.0. So you can leave it like that, but I took the liberty of calculating it, and I got 190 meters cubed. Make sure you label it right. Approximate the area between the x-axis and the function from 0 to 400 using MRAM over 4 subintervals. So I messed up on this problem. I actually meant to put 450, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to put from 0 to 450. So as you can see, we've got 4 subintervals. And those midpoints are 100, 200, 300, and 400. So when we're doing this, we just have to use the values for those midpoints. We don't have to use the values for like 350. We just have to use those. So we're going to multiply that by the difference in base, which is 100. So it's 100 times 65 plus 57 
plus 89 plus 64. And that's pretty much the answer. If you want to calculate that, you can. I did. And for my answer, I got 27,500. So for TRAM, the first thing we got to do is find our base. So we're going to put b minus a over x, which is 5 minus 1 over 8, which simplifies to 4 over 8, which is 1 half. And that's our base. So we plug that into the TRAM formula because that's how we're going to find our subintervals. So we've got 0 0.5 over 2, and then we plug in each um, value into the equation to calculate that. So I've listed out all the values up until 5, and then I just plug that into my calculator. You can leave this as is on the AP test, but um, I just wanted to make it look nicer, so I just calculated it, and I got this answer. So let's apply what we've learned to some free response questions. This is just a standard table problem, which you will get on the AP test. And usually there's only just one question dealing with the specific topic of Riemann sum, like C in this case. But we'll just go through the entire problem just to make sure that we understand the concept of Riemann sum and integrals and how they intertwine, uh, just to be thorough. So let's read this question. Let f be a function that is twice differentiable for all real numbers. The table above gives values of f for selected points in the closed interval 2 to 13. So let's solve letter A. It says estimate f prime at 4, show the work that leads to your answer. So to find f prime at 4, there really isn't a 4 in the, in the table, so we're just going to have to do the average slope equation. So it's f of 5 minus f of 3 over 5 minus 3. And we just plug in the values and we just solve it. So it's negative 6 over 2, which equals negative 3. Question B is asking us what the integral is from 2 to 13 of 3 minus 5f prime dx. So I'm just writing down the equation again. But the way to solve this is we should split it into two parts. So we've got the integral from 2 to 13 of 3 on one part and the rest of the integral in a different, separate one. So I'm taking out the negative 5 and what's left is f prime dx. So when we solve that, it'll just be the integral from 13 to 2 of 3 and then 5 times f of 13 minus f of 2 because the integral of f prime is f. So once we've all found that out, we can just plug in the points for f of 13 and f of 2 and solve using that. You don't have to simplify if you don't want to. I think that's the rule in the AP test and it'll save you a lot of time, but I'm just teaching you and I want to make it look nice. So the answer is 8. Question C is really the question of the lesson. So it's asking for an LRAM of the table and when you look at the table, the bases are not the same. It goes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 5. So you're going to have to find that and act accordingly and calculate it individually. So we're taking 1 and we're using the leftmost number, 2 using the leftmost number, 3 using the leftmost number, and 5 using the leftmost number. Which means that we'll be leaving out 6, which is the last number, like I told you about. So we just add that up. You Again, you don't have to simplify this. I'm just doing it because I like to make things look nicer. And the answer is 18. So the way I solved everything was the way the AP solved everything. So if you solved it the way I did, you'll get all the points that are possible. So let's review. A Riemann sum is the approximation of your integral. There's four types, LRAM, RM, MRAM, and TRAM. For LRAM, if the function is decreasing, it's an overestimate. If it's increasing, it's an underestimate. RM's vice versa. For TRAM, if it's concave up, it's an overestimate, and concave down is an underestimate. For tables, look at your bases. Congrats! You finished, and you've learned some Riemann sums. You're going.